Hi everybody, welcome to Armchair Ministries. Um, right, just do us a favour, tune into Way Church last weekend, you'll see a wonderful message about the help that God can give you, you know, and how the problems in our life, which we all have problems, and how the Lord can help you through and bless you and do you good. Now today, thank you for listening to Armchair Ministries anyway, if you're listening, Psalm 44, this is what it says. We have heard with our ears, O God, our fathers have told us what work thou didst in the day, the te- days, uh, in the times of old. Hallelujah, a long time ago, isn't it? But they listen. Uh, thou uh, didst dis- drive out the heathen with thy hand and plantest them, that's the, the plantest the people, that thou didst afflict the people and cast them out. For they got not the land in, for they got not the land in possession by their own sword, neither did their own arm save them. But thy right hand and thy right arm, and the light of thy countenance, because thou hast favour unto them. God gives us favour. Thou art my king, O God. Uh, thou art my king. Command deliverance to Jacob. Through thee we will push down our enemies. Through thy name we will tr- tread them under that rise up against us. For I will not trust in my bow, neither shall my soul save me. But thou, thou hast saved us from our enemies, hast put them to shame that hated us. In God we trust all the day long, and praise thy name forever and ever. Verse, seven, uh, and then verse 17 says this, All this has come to pass upon us. So he's recognised that the, the th- they're looking back and saying, why is this? So they recognise the things what are happening is because of it, God's people. Hallelujah. And this is what they says, verse 17, our heart is not turned back. Sorry, verse 17, yeah, all this has come upon us, yet have we not forgotten thee, now that we dealt falsely in thy covenant. So, you know, our heart is not turned back, neither have our steps declined from thy way. That's another good one. Though thou hast so broken us in the place of dragons and covered us with the shadow of death, if we have forgotten the name of our God, or, such out, or, or such stretched out our hands to strange gods, shall not God such it out? For he knows the secrets of our heart. Yea, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are counted as sheep of the slaughter. Wait, why sleepest thou, O Lord? Arise, cast out us not off forever. Wherefore, hidest thou thy face? Has forgotten our infliction and our oppression, for our soul is bowed down to the dust, and our belly cleaveth unto the earth. Arise for our help, and redeem us for thy mercy's sake. And just a, a text in uh, uh, verse 48, the last verse, it says, For our God, for this, this God is our God, forever and ever, he will be our guide, even unto death. So if you're not dead, is still being your guide. That sounds simple, doesn't it? Yes, I'm sure it does in our Christian life. We're talking about walking with God, not talking to talk, walk your walk. And people in the Bible, lots of people walk with God. But it doesn't specify what really uh, happened when they walk with God and how God dealt with the situation. What is Enoch? I'm sure says Enoch walked with God because he had this testimony that it pleased God. Sometimes we've got to please God, you know. And he had a testament that he pleased God. He lived a Christian life. In other words, he walked the walk. He didn't just talk his talk. When God took him, he didn't die. That's what it means. And in Revelation, he'll come back with Elijah. They'll be killed in, in Jerusalem. They'll die. They'll, they'll preach for three and a half years. They'll stop the rain and, and stuff like that. Bring a mighty miracle. And then they'll kill them. And after three and a half days lying dead, because it's appointed unto man to die, and then the judgment... The Spirit of God comes upon them, takes them to heaven, and half the city of Jerusalem is, is raised to the ground. Not good, very nice, is it? But if you do things to God's people, you know, he, he, will, he will have the last say. And Noah, you've read Genesis 6, 9, and Hebrews 11, 7. He was a just man, perfect in his generation. Hallelujah. Uh, uh, in general, he walked with God. That's the most important thing at all. He walked with God. You know, he doesn't talk about it. He got on with it and walked with God. He says he walked with us perfect in his day for thee. And he says, Ever I have seen thy righteousness before me in this generation. He was the only one perfect in his generation. He went in the ark, you know, then there came a flood and everybody lost their life. But he was righteous, see? So here we have, what we had a testimony 
and one who was righteous in God, who followed, was obedient and pleased God, and Noah followed him, and he said, build the ark to, to my, how I ex, uh, instruct you how to do it. And I think personally, right there at the beginning, because don't forget, it was a new heaven and a new earth. God is telling us how to build the church, but we don't listen. It's my spirit and by his word, not know the difference. You can't do it any other way, because it's either God's way, of the highway. So walk you are, don't talk your talk in your Christian life. You know, be what God says you are, and you know that people shall see Jesus in you and glorify your Father which is in heaven. The Bible talks about your faith follows your conversation. So yeah, what faith follows you. without faith is impossible to please God. If faith follows your conversation, what you say is what you do. Hallelujah. And this is it is here. Whose faith Follows their conversation. In other words, without faith, I've just said, it's impossible to please God. Hebrews 11 tells you all these people, they did it by faith. They didn't do it any other way. They realised that, Father, always in thy hands. They were in the hands of Almighty God. And they just had to obey what he had to do. They had to follow what he had to do. They had to do be truthful in what they had to say. And God's blessing will come upon the people and help them. Flesh is flesh. And spirit is spirit. There's no mixing of the two, one or the other. That's what the Bible says. Flesh is flesh and spirit is spirit. So there's no argument about it. You either got one or the other. And then we're born again of the Spirit of God uh, in our lives and we have a new start, don't we? So we had a new start. The old, all, all, all people who, in, before you were born again, you were lost. In, 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 uh, you didn't know what life was all about but Jesus came into your life and you found out really what life was all about you found something in here that emptiness which was in here something's come in it and it says God is coming to your life and you've been born again by his spirit which comes into your life so you're either one or the other some people try to live the Christian life in the flesh and the elders will be fair eventually I know people I've not seen them are going on and on and struggling on Fellow, so the other few weeks ago said, I don't do church anymore. But he never did church when he did, supposedly did church. But he didn't do church. And that's it. So he, he, he did not uh, walk his walk. See, he didn't follow what God was doing. He just came to church. Christianity is not Christianity. You know, Jesus said, he that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. So what he's saying, if you follow me, the light of life is following me. It shall not walk in darkness, because God, his spirit is in your life. You have a new life, and, and your spirit of God is in your life. You don't uh, say, as it were, trust the flesh, you trust the spirit of God who is in your life. So, but shall have the light of life. In other words, you possess something. You'll get something from God. If you follow him, you'll have the light of There's nothing greater than having God's life. There's nothing worse than having a religion. Hallelujah. I never had one before that. I know Jesus is my saviour, is my friend. And it's tremendous and he's been tremendously blessing to my life. In the difficult times of life, I have still followed him. Hallelujah. So light is life. It's God's life. Nothing greater than God's life in your life. There's no substitution. We are habitation of God through his spirit. How do you know you're not following? That's the thing, you know. Don't assemble as, a, as yourself together. The Bible, you don't assemble yourself together, man, or so many. You don't come to church anymore, you know. I don't trust them not down there, I don't. They, you know, when somebody wanted one day, one day, you know, they did it. So he's saying, saying, the meeting people in the church who are not walking the walk, and it's having an effect upon their lives. I know he does his hands all the time, you know. But the thing is, we've got, as individuals, we've got to influence people who have come to church. Hallelujah. Once to one, there's nothing greater than being a one to one. You know, go to that one, then go to that one. He asks you questions and he gives a nice answer to the problem or the situation that they find. That, that lady this morning, she was absolutely brilliant, absolutely brilliant. So, how do you know you're not following? Uh, you don't read his word, you don't pray, you don't, yeah, you don't witness to people. In other words, you're not walking. Hallelujah, just doing your own path. You're not following, you're just following your own ideas your own way. There are lots of people who do that and I understand really it's always somebody who has hindered you. Don't look at them people. Look at God himself. Hallelujah. Spend time with God. Don't go running around like we used to be when we were young Christians. 
running around with like chickens with no eggs. I spend, I used to spend time with the Lord then. So you spend more time today. You get the right message from the right person. I said the other week, you're going to the right place. Hallelujah. There's nothing great to that. So you're not a possessor of God's life because you don't do all these things. One time you were, and now you're not. And it's darkness has come into your life. The flesh is taken over and it's become darkness over. You know actually righteousness in your life. You don't do the right things and you don't get blessed of God in your Christ. There's no purpose in your life. He said, the people that sat in darkness have seen great lies. When Jesus turned up, the people that sat in darkness have seen great light. If you look at the Bible, like I say, I be his people. They had a testimony, they did these things, and God bless them, hallelujah, you know, in their life. Uh, but you see, the reason is, we are spiritual people. You know, we're spiritual people. <laughs> the flesh is gone, you know, it's gone. Until we realise it, how big God is. You know, it's, it's not, it's not, we're spiritual, we probably say, I have no confidence in the flesh. He did it one time, didn't he? He caused that much trouble. Because he had confidence in the flesh. I'm not very far behind the, the, the best best apostle, you know. I'm a, a line of Pharisees, you know. <laughs> so I'm trying to say he wasn't them. But now he, he was born again. He had a new start. He met Jesus on that road, didn't he? Hallelujah. Paul said then, he said, I am crucified with Christ. Not I that live, but Christ lives in me. God lives in me. The God of rules of the universe lives in me. Hallelujah. It's a big difference, isn't it, to his life? Hallelujah, not the same, is it? Something happened to me when I gave my life to the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, we're a habitation of God through His Spirit. His Spirit is in our lives. If you've not got His Spirit in your life, you are none of us. He's a Father to us and we shall be His Son. And I started off with lots of people that are not following Jesus today. And that is the reason they're not living the Christian life. That's why they, some people just talk the talk and that's what they did, because I've listened to them. They just talk the talk instead of walking the walk. In other words, whose faith did not follow the conversation. What they said is not what they did. Hallelujah. You got that? Praise God. Hallelujah. Uh, so it says here, in, in other words, it says, I am dead and Christ is living in me. His ministry is flowing through my life. I'm blessing my life and I can bless other people. Uh, God provides the tools. Doesn't that? By his spirit and by his word uh, in our Christian life, the flesh prof profits nothing. The Bible says it, it, it profits nothing. It's worthless. Hallelujah. Oh, how boring. God is not boring. God's life in his is not boring. I'll tell you, his love, his peace, his power, his blessing, the blessing of God which makes rich and has no sorrow unto me, a joy unspeakable and full of glory. I said to somebody the other week, I think I mentioned it last week, I said to her, uh, George, get to remember George, I, I think I got myself in trouble. I didn't even it personally. I meant it to help but show that real joy comes when Jesus, when it's Jesus over you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus over you in faith. Hallelujah. I'm not doing it God's way. I'm doing it, I said I'm not doing it my way. I'm doing it God's way. Because I found out, believe it or not, it works. When it works, you do it, don't you? It's like having something for tea. You're like, well, I'll have for tea. I'll have that again. And it's like that with the Lord. I'll have some of that again. I'll spend time in your presence, Lord, and you can fill me again, even though... So it's not boring, uh, you know. He said, I have come that you might have life and have it more abundant. Yeah, we have life in the natural, but he's saying we well, can have it more abundantly. You know, piled down, pressed down, shaking together, running over out of our lives, you know, we saw the purpose in our lives, we see Jesus has come, he spoke to us, and we, you know, people in the Bible, if you read the Bible, you find out that he's helped them and blessed them and do them, done them good, you know. He didn't speak to religious people, he said he spoke with authority. None of us are religious people, <laughs> none of us are religious people. Oh my goodness me, I don't need to say anything to you. I, when I give my life to Jesus, it was simply the best, better than all the rest. And as Paul said, for me to live is Christ and to die is gain. See, it's not doing. We always walked up on a church, which was always doing, always running here, there and everywhere. It's being first. But I want to be, I want to be some of what you want me to be, Lord. Spend time in your five o'clock in the morning, reading God's word, praying, 
working for the Lord in Sunday school, the youth, or this, or whatever, many other things, helping the minister, doing it. Oh, I tell you, friends, I had time to sin if I had time to sin, if you understand what I mean. Well, you made mistakes. But you don't purposely and willfully do something which is wrong, because that is unrighteousness. We do righteous things, you know, in our lives, and to help people and bless them in our life. Uh, he says here, none of works that any man should boast, it's a gift of God. So there's nothing you can do, you can boast about it, it's a gift of God, everything is a gift of God. Uh, it says, uh, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? I thank God through the Lord Jesus Christ that he will do it. So you can't do it yourself, you're going to do it through the Lord Jesus Christ, who can bring it into your life and help you through. That's why he has planned it as he has planned it. But the thing is, you've got to follow the plan. Like, like uh, jo uh, Jonah did, didn't he? Follow the plan. Me, you, you do it as I told you. And I think it's a, even though he was just saying that, I think it was to do uh, the fact that he wanted, he found him righteous, but he wanted him to do it exactly. As he wants to do you want to do it as John Paul wants to do it exactly, you know, not tweaking it or anything like that, you know, listening, learning, living what the Christian life is about, it's about the power of the Almighty God in your life. Jesus said, He that findeth me findeth life. I've tried to say, people that sat in darkness found great life, they found a purpose for their lives, you know. Those things I mentioned, you're not doing those things, so you're walking in darkness, even though you don't even know it. It's that darkness. The light that is in thee be darkness. The Bible says, how great is that darkness? You can't see. You can't see it. You know, it's like trying to get along with You need glasses and you don't put them on, you know. You know, that's bad, isn't it? But, you know, if you don't read the Word, if you don't pray, you don't have fellowship, you're just as bad as not that. Not having your glasses on. Hallelujah. You can't see where you are go. Uh, you know. If that darkness be in you, be darkness. How great is that darkness? And that which is flesh is flesh. That which is spirit is spirit. And it's reminding you. Flesh is taking over in your Christian life. Try to live the Christian life in the flesh. In other words, you're just talking your talk. You say, I, I, I met them. Hallelujah. You're not walking the walk. Whose faith follows their conversation, what they say is what they do, doing what they say by faith, living their life, not causing the strife, uh, seem to have improvement, disagreement, it's just like disagreement, achievement, instead of achievement in our Christian life. He that findeth me, Jesus said, he that findeth me, findeth life. Christianity is a person, it's the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah, that was a mouthful, wasn't it? It's the Lord Jesus Christ. So Christianity is all that brings you, churchianity is all that brings you, is calamity, and it will do one day in your, crowd, in your life. We read Psalm 44, you know, it brings us into eternal life. Our, Christ, our life is an eternal life. Not three score years and ten. I've had mine. <laughs> I'm on a bonus. <laughs> I am glad too, I tell you. It's hallelujah, because the only you're progressing. Progressing, you know, the lady this morning, she's run about to walk and we're all in different places and, and we're all having to help people and do them good. So, so, someone once said to me, he said, my husband has good points, my husband has bad, bad points. He says, good, good, take notes of the good points of Christianity, good points and got bad points, we're all going to hell. Because <laughs> it's the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, it's Jesus in our life. That he has set us free. He has given us new life. He was blessing us. He wanted a purpose for your life. And that life is to take the gospel to other people and show that without Jesus you are lost. Hallelujah in your life. The righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. That's what we are. The natural man understands not the things of God. Neither can he because they are spiritually discerned. It's by his spirit in our lives. You've been reading your Bible. Even when you became a Christian you've read certain versions of the Bible and this and the other and oh my goodness me I have read one version I've never read any other it's the King James it's been around for most of the t most longer than most people Peter sorry most other Bibles I started reading it and I'll tell you as I read it today and it's made a mighty difference to my life I sure can you quote the scripture can you quote you? I have come that you might have life and you might have it more than once. I heard a very famous preacher. He couldn't even, he couldn't even uh, quote John 3.16. He 
terrible, isn't it? Because some words have been put in and some words have been changed and the Spirit of God does not recognise what is written. Oh, that's big stuff, that, isn't it? But I tell you, it's right. You see, the outer man perish, but the inner man is renewed day by day. So the old man is perish. We know it's perishing, no we? Eh? You know? All my mates, people I spoke to when I became a Christian are dead. They're dead. They didn't, one cell, they said, I, I, I come after I get married, which it says in the Bible, and it didn't, you know what I mean? And others who get this, and the, the, the people that are friends of mine, you know, real friends. I have real friends in the world. Can I say this? I've not had many real friends in the church. Hallelujah. But it doesn't matter. Jesus didn't. He came on his own, didn't he? John came on his own, didn't he? Hey, do you have to have a Follow, you know, a lot of people behind, you know, we follow Jesus, we all follow Jesus. Jesus Paul said, be followers of me as I am of Christ. That's what he said. We follow Jesus. Paul, we follow people whose who's, uh, who, who's faith follows the conversation. You know, I said to somebody once, I, I lost with people, friends, but I, I said, to, I just, you can't do that. You're Christian. You cannot do that. Your language is atrocious. They come falling out of the pub and they think they're Christian. I was in the pub and I got saved. I was born again. And I was with a pint in my hand the, the very next day. I didn't even know I was a born again. I'm looking at, what am I doing here? <laughs> I don't wonder what am I doing here. It's very strange, doesn't it? It does sound absolutely mental. Hallelujah. So the outer man perishes and the inner man uh, uh, is uh, is in renewed day by day. When you read your Bible, when your Spirit of God is in your life, fella, like I said, came to the church and he doesn't do church anymore. Uh, he didn't do it then. If he did it, what he thought was church then, he wasn't doing very well. Hallelujah! Somebody said to me, "I've seen some of them mates of yours in the pub." Fella, I saw him out. But he's seen them in the pub. See, and uh, I was in a meeting one day. We just had an extension in the church and. There was a fellow stood there with uh, matching uh, Bibles on the leather bound under his arm, absolutely immaculate in the dress. And uh, a fellow came up to me and he said, is he one of the ministering brethren? I could hardly say it because some people are so ignorant. He was a minister. Some people are so ignorant. We don't follow that kind of stuff. Be proper with people if you're a, if you're a minister of the gospel. You might not, but be interested in people. You know, you love of God, which pastors knowledge, you can't believe it. Why do I be like that with people? Because I love people. Hallelujah. And this, I said, I hadn't got no out, and it, off he went. And he was on the platform this night, and he said, do you know what he said? I, I've not found, I've not made, uh, missed a, a, a day's preaching in my life. I thought, you're in trouble, boy, or... And uh, anyway, I left it at that. And a few weeks later, a few months later, he fell down a ladder at the side of the church. He shouldn't have been up the ladder anyway. Somebody should have been up doing it for him. Because that's what you do for your minister. That's what I did anyway. Digging a pit, doing this, doing that, helping at Bonsley, you know. But anyway, and he fell down. And uh, I said to a friend of mine, I said to him, I said, do you know what, do you remember what he said? He said, yeah, he didn't know what he said. He didn't have this. I said, I said, has he missed any ministry? He said, yes, he has. I said, well, he must be right then. He said, what do you mean? I said, pride cometh before a fall. <laughs> Great your Christian life. Hallelujah. You've got to live it. You've got to live it before you can give it. So God bless you today. Help you make a mighty witness for the Lord Jesus Christ. Don't forget that, what I said about listening to the Way Church in Wigan. Uh, and what the slave had to say about uh, Naaman and the, the problems he had, it was about mental health. But hey, I tell you, it was brilliant, absolutely. <laughs> Somebody, if I said that to myself, it probably was for you that, Tom. <laughs> hey, I've been said more worse things than that to me, but it doesn't matter to me because God is the strength of my life, He's my blessing. He's done me good and I can go look back and I say, Will you? I've been on this way a long time and I've walked the walk along. Sometimes I stumble and you know, like these people at the end, what it says, you know, this God is our God. Our God. Is he be our guide unto death? 
He said, hello, God. You're my brother. You're my brother. Even though you don't recognise I am your brother. Maybe you're my brother. Hallelujah. And the Lord wants us to know that we want to be together. And even though we may have many difficulties and faults and misunderstandings and whatever, we're together. If we're together, two is better than one. The Bible says two is better than one. That fella who, who doesn't do church anymore, he was at front of his house doing a bit of a job and the load of bricks and I come and pass. I said, I'll do them for you. And uh, I, he was taken aback. <laughs> he was taken aback. I said, two is better than one. He said, I didn't know that. <laughs> I didn't know that. I said, two is better than one. Hallelujah. So the Lord bless you. Make his face to shine upon you. And make this next week a, a, a week which you can communicate with you. Instead of, you know, sometimes you've got to... You know, those who work for Jesus, only you can do. So the Lord's giving me text. You know, to, to the fact that we rest in the Lord, wait patiently for him, and he shall bring it to pass. Rest in the Lord. You know, rest, you know, rest it in the Lord. Not going, you know, doing this or doing that, you know, going to Bahamas on a beach. Rest in the Lord. Wait patiently for him. Have we got any patience? Sometimes we haven't got any patience left, have we really? You know, we've been on the way a long time, which I have. But, you know, my patience sometimes has been exhausting. But, you know, wait patiently for him. He'll bring it to pass. That's the beauty of it. He will bring it to pass. You know, God can do anything. Nothing impossible that God has spoken of the world given to me. That our God. That is our God. He's that is our God. He's our God. And we'll be our guide even unto death. So you're still alive today. So we're still your guide. Get that message? The Lord bless you. Make his face to shine upon you. Thank you. Hopefully you're listening today and we're blessed. Amen.